All right, welcome back. It is time for another Autodesk 3ds Max 2018 YouTube Classroom video. Uh, today we're going to go through an introduction into keyframe animation. So the goal for today is to understand how keyframes work, what they are, and, and how we can use them. So we're going to just use our basic cube today that you're used to having set up. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, move it around. So first things first, grab your cube that you have already, hit W, and you know you can move it around. And when you let go, um, it stays where it's put, right? I'm going to undo that. Let me turn my little thing on. Okay, cool. So today, we're going to look at this timeline slider down here. And we're, it's going to be a short video today, but I do want to go through the basics of how this works. So keyframes are like a snapshot in time, and that's what how you need to think about them. So if I've got this cube here, and I turn on set key, now my keyframes are like, see how this timeline uh, turns red? That's a warning. That means what you do is now going to be recorded. Now I can take this and move it and scrub this and it jumps back to where it was initially because it says currently that this has no keyframe, so it's automatically set at its original start point. Now, at frame zero, there's frame zero through frame 100 by default. At frame zero, if we create a key using this button down here called set keys, basically it takes a snapshot in time of where this object is, its position, its rotation, and its scale. All right, each one of these is corresponds to a color. We'll talk to that. I'll talk about that in a minute. And it also um, relates to like its uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. Okay, so now if I scrub down and move it and scrub back, it snaps back to this original spot. Okay, if I go here, move this, and set this button by set key, press this key button. Now when I move it, it stays put. If I move it now, now on frame 29 and then scrub again, it jumps back to its original keyframe because basically this is saying, hey, I want this to be right here in this location, X, Y, and Z position, and I want you to remember that. So whenever we scrub along this line, it's gonna jump back to the current keyframe. Now, we can take this and actually move it as long as we place a keyframe. So there's like a buffer period. So I'm going to go to frame 50. I'm going to drag along a specific axis. In this case, we're going to go Y. And then I'm going to create another set, uh, create another keyframe. Now remember, this set key has to be set. And when you press set keys, you'll notice that a brand new little uh, red, green, and blue box shows up. Now, if I drag left, nothing happens. But if I drag right, you'll notice that it starts moving. That's because we've set the position here, and then 50 frames later, we've set the position over here. So what it does is it automatically tweens between those two places, okay? So if I hit the play button down here, it'll automatically move over. When it hits 50, it stops. At 100, it loops back to where it originally started. So let's go ahead and pause that, look at 50, so at 50, it's right there. How about at 100, we move it back to where we started? Okay, set a key by pressing the plus button. And now I'll go back to the beginning and press play. All right, it moves over, moves back. Oh, there's a hitch. You see that hitch? Welcome to the bane of your existence. Hitches are when one frame is slightly different from the next frame. So if this frame is different from this frame. It's hard to tell because they're far away from each other. But if you hit play and watch it loop through, it obviously has a problem. There's a way we can easily fix this using the timeline. So we know that this frame here is right where we want this to end. And if you click on these individual boxes, you can actually adjust or select those frames. If you take a frame and you drag it, you can move where its location is, okay? So, because there's no keyframe set before this one, it will automatically default to where the generic location was prior, which was 
over here because we set it. If there's no keyframe before something, it's automatically set to its original location. But if we create, um, if we drag this back, it's still there. Notice also, if you take this frame and drag it closer to 50, so let's say I dra drag the first frame over to 35 and I press play. It's not gonna move till his 35, then it's gonna move really fast. But we still have that hitch and we wanna get rid of the hitch, okay? So let's go ahead and pause that. And what we can do is actually, we can take this frame, hold shift and drag it. And that creates a copy, just like we do when uh, we're creating geometry, okay? So if I hit play, you'll notice that it moves back and forth and then it still hitches. Now, um, but, but, but be careful, I almost always hit spacebar for play because I'm used to music programs, but um, so be careful if you do that. Um, because you could lock your geometry. Generally, when the space, uh, when the set keyframe and the red bar is active, then it doesn't have become a problem. To delete a keyframe like this one, I'm actually going to click inside the uh, area and drag, and I get a little selection box. Grab that, and I just press the delete key, and it goes away. Now, if I want this to start right where it ends, I'm going to grab this keyframe, hold shift, and drag it all the way to zero. Now, the first frame and the last frame are identical except for, um, they're identical in their position, rotation, and scale, but they're not uh, in the exact, uh, they're at different times. Okay, so now if we watch it, it moves, and now you'll notice it's smooth. Right, it goes all the way there, back to where it starts, and moves. Now you'll notice there's still a hitch. And we'll talk more about why there's a hitch in the next video. But for now, I think we're going to stop because this is the basics of keyframes. Okay? Now, if you turn this off for set key, you can also do something called auto key. Auto key will automatically create a key whenever you do something new on an unused frame. So let's say I go to frame 20. Currently, there is no, uh, no keyframe. If I drag up on Z, you'll notice that I've got a red box. The red box shows that it's gonna go up, but it's still moving from here through to here. So that red box means that on trans, uh, the transition is going to, not transition, the um, movement, the X, Y, and Z. Uh, what's that called? So select and move, uh, anyway. When it goes up, it's only moving. It's not changing any of the rotation. If I move to frame 10, hit E, and rotate it, it's going to rotate to this angle, and then because there's a green frame here, it's gonna rotate back. So it's gonna start, remember, at the very beginning, we had a keyframe. I had to select the object. At the very beginning, we have a keyframe that is red, green, and blue, okay? The green affects, it gets affected here, which is rotation. So the rotation is set here, it's gonna to change to here, and then it's go back to the green here. Now the green between here and here does not change. So therefore, technically, we could remove that green frame. But you can see how it comes up, moves over, moves back, and its positional position stays the same. So it goes up, twists, we can also adjust scale in the same manner. Now, what color will the scale be? I think you can figure it out. I'm gonna change the scale on all axes, so it's gonna get bigger. Now, um, you'll notice that the scale starts here because this is the last blue box. So you've got a rainbow box, which is red, green, and blue. You've got the rotation goes from here to here and then goes from there to there. The scale starts blue, grows until it gets as big as it can here, and then it shrinks down quickly to get back to its original scale. So now we've got this setup. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see a little better. All right, so what I want you to do for the next 10 minutes or so is just experiment with this. Now, this can be a very, very frustrating process. Auto key is very dangerous because you can start moving stuff around thinking that you're done modeling, but you have auto key on and suddenly 
your object will be changing and modifying and getting all crazy. Keyframes can also adjust um, modifiers and a bunch of other cool stuff. So with that in mind, um, I want you to go ahead, stop when, we, when we're going to end now, and then I want you to just experiment with the different keyframes on the timeline. Now, this is just scratching the surface. There's a whole bunch of stuff you're going to get frustrated because every time you, you create a keyframe, it's going to go sort of slow in and then slow out. And we're going to talk about how to adjust that in the next video. But for now, just spend like 10 minutes messing around, making something bigger or smaller. Auto key means that it'll automatically save your changes. But if you wanted to get rid of it, let's say, for instance, I wanted to get rid of the, um, the scale change, right? The scale set here. And here, if I, move, if I take this and delete it by hitting the delete key, now the scale is not going to change. All right. Maybe you can try uh, and just see what you can get done. Now, notice if your keyframes aren't there, it's because your keyframe and your timeline, see all my frames are gone? Your timeline is set based on each object. That's a very big deal. If you have nothing selected or if you have the wrong thing selected, then you're not going to get any keyframes, but the object's still going to move. This can be really frustrating for beginners. You've got to realize that you have to select what you want to see the timeline for. Every object in your scene has its very own timeline, which is great, but also frustrating. Because when you first start, you're just like, where did all my keyframes go? And now you know. So with that started, go ahead, experiment, Get crazy, make a jiggly cube or whatever you want to make. And then we'll see you next time at the next video um, where we talk about how to sort of smooth out some things so we can get perfectly smooth motion. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.